Hi, I'm Archie Montgomery, and this is North Cadbury Court, home of the Montgomery family for over a hundred years. Let me show you around inside. As we come in, we come straight into this beautiful oak panelled North Hall, also known as the Dining Hall. It's one of two rooms licensed for civil ceremonies, but many of our guests get married in St. Michael's Church, which is right next door, only 30 paces away. It's a glorious building with a capacity to seat at least 200 people. The dining hall itself can accommodate up to 150 guests and also provides a magnificent setting for any form of corporate gathering, presentation or round table meeting. Immediately next door to the North Hall, we have this wonderful ballroom. This beautiful ballroom with its own Beckstein piano can easily seat 160 people for a banquet. Its sprung dance floor makes it perfect for balls and its large and airy nature is great for lectures or meetings for up to 300 people. Like the North Hall, this is a flexible space that has been used for everything from rock concerts, fashion shows or even just family table tennis. We're incredibly lucky to have the two large rooms in the house which means that whatever the weather, the extra expense of marquees is not needed. One huge advantage of this room is that by opening these lovely French windows, we can walk straight out onto the graveled area here and the lawns beyond, which is perfect for holding drinks receptions. And we've got seating here at these tables for 50 people. So if you want to take the weight off your feet, you maybe just sit down and enjoy the view. Next door we have the library, which is a lovely comfortable room for relaxing, reading the Sunday papers, perfect in the winter for snuggling around one of the four open wood fires that we have in the house. Here's the morning room, one of my favorite rooms because it captures so much light. It's often used as a breakfast room around the original family dining tables but it equally provides a charming setting for any business meeting. The graceful French windows allow for immediate access to the paths and lawns and all the fun to be had outside. We're now in the old Victorian family kitchen in the middle of the house and very little has changed since the days that my mother was here making bread for all the family on the Arga. All the dresses and the paintwork is much as it's always been all my life, except that we've given it a facelift and we now have all the mod cons that you'd want from modern kitchen. We have cutlery and place settings here for up to 70 people. So it's possible to have a very large house party here with all our own equipment. But if the intention is to hold a larger event, we have this purpose built catering kitchen here with enough preparation area and enough cooking facilities here to cater for several hundred. So to my left now are the large catering wash-up areas and to my right is the dairy, so called because that's where we used to separate out the cream and it's a terrific room because it stays cold and so it's perfect for storing drinks fruit, vegetables and flowers. Unusually, we don't charge any corkage, so all food and drink can be sourced at the client's discretion. And just a few yards further, this is the exit onto the patio where we have the barbecue area, which is perfectly placed only just a short distance from the kitchen, makes it really easy to get the food and drink in and out. Just a few yards further and we come to the swimming pool. The pool area has been a terrific hit and is extremely popular with all the guests in the house. The surround is made from our own stone that we've cut out from quarries on our own land and works beautifully. Here is a 10-seater jacuzzi with a little star ceiling above it and the whole area links through onto the patio and wall garden outside 
So nothing easier than popping outside for a drink and coming in and cooling off. And through here, we have the way through to the chill out area and the two treatment rooms. To my left, we've got the men's changing rooms. To my right, the ladies' changing room. Just beside it, the sauna. The gym, fully equipped gym. And here we have the recently refurbished East Wing flat that I'd like to show you. You'll notice immediately the decor here is completely different to the main house. It's bright, cheerful, colorful, modern and fun. We have a self-catering kitchen and there are four smaller but very comfy and cozy bedrooms here. The bedrooms are not en suite but there are just two bedrooms for each bathroom, even the bathrooms are quirky and the whole flat doesn't have to be taken with the house. It does come as an extra if you need the extra accommodation. The guests have access to a simple office but Wi-Fi is available in every corner of the house at fibre broadband speeds. This is the snooker room. Uh, the snooker table is very old and it came from the family castle up in Scotland. So this is a lovely quiet room for a game of snooker or there's a darts board in the cupboard at the end. This is the sitting room and it's a great room for relaxing in. It's often used as a bar area or a place for coffee and cheese after events. We've got card tables and such like in here. We've got the fire and there is an extraordinary television inside an old picture frame that I found, which is quite quirky. We're now coming down into the old wine cellars of the house, but we've never had any wine, so it always seemed a bit of a wasted space. So we've turned it now into a sort of DIY casino for a bit of fun. So we've got a roulette room, a blackjack room, and behind me, the poker table. In the other cellar, we have a disco. Anybody can bring their own playlist, their laptops, iPlayers, plug it into here, and we've got a fantastic disco so that when the music has to stop upstairs, people come down here and dance till dawn. Here we have the large oak staircase built by my grandfather. It's magnificent and is the most wonderful backdrop for a grand arrival down into the North Hall. Perfect for photographs. This is the first floor main landing and I particularly want to show you this because this wonderful light area was used in a Jane Austen film, Persuasion, where it opens with Jane running up and down this corridor collecting various items. So here we have one of the most special rooms in the house, the balcony room. The balcony room has the advantage of fantastic light through any of the three windows. The view is spectacular out over the park and over the countryside. It's got a romantic feel to the room and because of the size of it, it lends itself well to brides getting ready and all the presents and fun. And next door is a rather special bathroom. The bath is a tranquility bath that blows little bubbles at you through little lights. And if you plug in your iPod, the whole bath becomes an underwater speaker. Before we go through and see any more bedrooms, I just want to point out something that's quite unusual for a listed grade one house. We have a lift that goes from the ground floor all the way up through to the second floor. So it's a great asset to have in the house. This is the schoolroom, named because my mother and her sister were schooled in here, educated by 16 consecutive governesses. And I should say that all the mattresses for the beds are made to the bed. All the linen is very high thread count Egyptian cotton over toppers. You will not 
have a more comfortable night's sleep than in this house. I will just show you the ensuite bathroom. The decor is continued through from the bedroom, the fishing theme, and these are all my grandfather's old fishing rods that we've put on the walls. All the bars in the house are original. They have been taken out and re enameled and re-chromed and put back in, and they are extremely large and comfortable. At either end of the house, we have two family suites where two interlocking bedrooms share a bathroom. And on the first room is Archie's room, my old room. Of course, it's changed a lot, a lot warmer, and the bed's a lot bigger and more comfortable. Next door is my sister Catherine's old room. You can see that it's laid up now as a twin bedded room, but bear in mind that all the twin beds in the house can be zip and linked into a double. Both rooms share the nursery bathroom here with bath and shower. As we come back down the corridor, just halfway up the stairs is a room we call the children's room, and I'll show you why. This is a room that has been designed specifically for children, so we've got boxes of dressing up kit, DVD players, and it's easy for the parents to come up and check up on children who are often up here with a nanny or carer, and they can be enjoying themselves at the same time as all the adults downstairs. This is the Jane Austen room, another spectacular Elizabethan four-poster bed, called Jane Austen room because we know that she has some quite close associations with the house. Again, a lovely, typical Elizabethan style room. From the bedroom, we come through towards the bathroom and in the space here, we have two bunk beds so the children can be close by without being in the bedroom. We don't count these as part of the bed number in the house. And here we have this absolutely splendid bathroom with gorgeous parrot wallpaper and lovely light. The oak room is perhaps the most spectacular room in the house. We have the original four-poster bed and the original Tudor plaster ceiling, which is one of the reasons the house is listed grade one. The bathroom has a freestanding bath, but it gets fantastic light, particularly the evening light. This is Mary's bedroom. And this room has the advantage of very easy wheelchair access from the lift. It's on the same level. And though the bathroom is a fantastic bathroom anyway, the shower is designed for easy wheelchair access. And you come through into the main bathroom with this rather quirky wallpaper and huge original bath. On my right, to John's room with two twin beds that can be zip and linked. And round here, we have a little bit of Downton I want to show you. Because in the wall here is a big copper urn that the maids in days gone by would have had to carry all the water up, put into the urn, light the coal fire underneath and then once warmed up bucket the hot water out through into the bathroom and tips it into this underfloor slate bath and that would have needed a lot of water. The original bath is probably at least 200 years old so a much more convenient modern alternative we have here a bath with a shower above but we have cut all the slates around to match the underfloor one. So this bathroom is shared by Sir John's room and the room that we're in now, the Orient Room, named that way because of the silk frieze that my grandparents brought back 
from China in the 20s. We're now standing in this medieval hallway and these timbers go back to 1300, which is quite a thought. And behind us, by itself, the first bedroom on this floor, the second floor, is Merlin's room. Merlin's room is one of the most popular rooms in the house. It's out by itself a little bit and has all the original charm and character of the oldest part of the house. This is Uncle Tom's cabin. Uncle Tom's cabin was named after a family log cabin that's built on Georgian Bay in Ontario, Canada. It's quite a sizable room with an ensuite bathroom, as are nearly all the rooms on the top floor here. Even though we're on the top floor that would have been servants' quarters, these are sizable, nice rooms. This next room is the Kinordi room. It's named after the family estate in Scotland, at Kerry Muir, and we've got photographs and paintings of Kinordi House, which is still there. We're now in Ballantour, named after my grandmother's castle where the snooker table came from. Nelly's room, with this beautiful old four-poster bed, is named after grandmother's favorite lady's maid, who is also an expert cook. Balmoral room is unique in the house in having the only single bed. It is in fact an old quirky campaign bed and therefore a four poster, but it does have, like all the other rooms on the top floor, its own bathroom allocated, this one right next door. At the west end of the house, we have Cleopatra's room. A little smaller than some, but it has a wonderful, cottagey, comfortable feel, and of course its own bathroom. Equally charming is Charlotte's room, which again has the south views, but unusually has a walkway down through to its own bathroom and a double-ended slipper bath. Lady Rosetta's room is in the middle of the house, but does benefit from fabulous evening light. King Edward's room is huge, and like many other bedrooms, allows space to put up pop-up beds for extra members of the family or friends. Camelot room is a similarly large room, large enough for its own three-piece suite, and a beautifully decorated bathroom with all wildflowers. Excalibur room is set up as a twin, but all the beds can be zip and linked, as we said. All the beds in the house are equally comfortable. It doesn't have its own ensuite, but it has a bathroom allocated to it, which is literally just a couple of paces down the corridor, and here with a shower, blue sink. I brought you up onto the roof of the house, which is unlike most old Elizabethan houses in that we've got a flat area in behind the parapets and it is a perfect area for coming up, looking at the view. In the evening we have up lighters that light up all the roofs and the chimneys and it's a fantastic place to come up and have cocktails. It also is the first tee for our three hole golf course and I would just like to point out some of the items that come with the house at no extra charge. Down over there, we have the shooting gallery with three air pistols by the potting shed. We have a hard tennis court in the wall garden. Just outside the wall garden, we have the croquet lawn. Just outside the croquet lawn, we have the two grass tennis courts you can see just over the ridge, and beyond that, the archery range. In front of us, we've got a thousand acres here of farmland that we own around the house. Our first green is down beside the lake 
in front of the lawns here. On the lake we have pedlos, lakes are full of fish, carp in this one, the next door one, trout. And then round back onto the lawn again, we have 12 bumper balls, which are in constant use for people just having fun playing football. And we have a paintballing range inside the wood on the right. The hill on the right here is Camelot and is a half an hour walk up the hill and round the top and absolutely recommended to all. It's a great hangover cure, if nothing else. The whole atmosphere about this place is all about being comfortable and having fun. Well, that's the end of our short video tour of the house. I hope you've enjoyed it, but it can't compare with coming and seeing it for yourself and we'd be delighted to show you around. So please do get in touch and we'd love to meet you.